Welcome to BadgeFest 2014. I'm Sarah Blattner, the founder and badge lead for TumReads. Today we're going to hear from schools within our network who are going to share their badge-empowered learning quests, no matter where they are along the journey. Let's get started with our very first school, the Krieger Schechter Day School in Baltimore, Maryland. Hi everybody. Uh, Krieger Schechter took on badge learning for our sixth graders and we were looking for a way to upgrade our electives course in sixth grade, which we collectively called Life Skills, which is Computer Information Literacy and Wellness. And we were finding that we were covering some similar basis with computers and information literacy. So we went with the sixth grade elective and what we found is we were able to kind of bundle things together so that the um, digital age learning course we could do in a semester in the fall and cover um, better some of the skills we were trying to do with their computer and information literacy. We really love the online course as well as, as the students did. And they really surprised us in some ways and Alex jump in here. Yes, yeah, so the first half of the year we used uh, Sarah's uh, uh, course and it was great. The, the kids loved earning badges and this was their first real experience with digital badges. They, uh, they took right to it, they understood um, how to navigate the site and right now in the second half of the year uh, we've created our own badge learning site using the curriculum uh, for our wellness class. And wellness kind of builds on what they learned in the first half of the year in terms of the technology and the uses, we've incorporated Lido. They create a, um, a Google site for discussions and communications. Um, we did this, although there's a discussion piece in the Badge OS, because it's wellness, and we're going to talk about everything from nutrition and fish, fitness to... Um, uh, substance abuse. Yep. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so some things they want to share might be private. And we still want to be able to see it, to, to see their work and to have discussions with them. Um, the, the wellness teacher who is in, uh, uh, still a part of the um, Tamarins program is also our guidance counselor. It's a good way for her to get more information about her students if she reads what they're, they're um, sharing right. in, in, through the wellness course. Right, and, and we actually adapted, we adapted her curriculum. Uh, to the the digital badge course, so we we sat down uh, uh, over a period of time and transferred all of her notes and and lessons in, and into quests, and we created digital badges for for each of her uh, lessons. It was really great. Our team has so many good strengths. Um, we have a language arts person, and Alex um, is has a great tech. Uh, mind and he just loves exploring and trying new things. So um, and we're geeking working... out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, geeking out. <laughs> right. So so, we... so all of these badges here are units in in the wellness curriculum that we have for the sixth grade. The the safety relationships, emotional play, all those things were were originally just taught in class, and now it's digital. And in addition to the wonderful curricular achievement badges that help scaffold the learning experience in Krieger Schechter's wellness program, they also have a collection of stealth badges or hidden badges that support and encourage soft skill behaviors and connected learning behaviors within their learning community. This shows you um, in Badge OS, that's what we're using, the administrative view and how we can comment back to students' work on the site and build through. Right. Uh, you, you can see here, I believe this is somebody, a student's submission. Uh, the quest was a uh, wellness wheel where they, they had to kind of look at uh, different aspects of their own wellness. And here you can see a submission uh, from a student uh, reflecting uh, about um, this, the create quest. So we're looking forward to um, to next year. I'm trying to think very quickly. Um, we have talked very often about how we can maybe use Google um, Docs so that the students can have the 
the badges to take with them next year, how we build this out. Um, the teachers are going to switch a little, but I know that we're going to at least have one teacher take the, the teacher program this summer online. I'm trying to figure out ways to build it out. And somebody else talked about um, going one-to-one -one and needing internet safety. And now we're going to one-to-one, -to -one, but probably younger in fourth or fifth grade. And now we've got this curriculum in sixth grade. So we have, um, as we transition, I'm, I'm really interested in hearing what other people are doing with um, transitioning and moving on, and then what we can do um, to build on what we have here. Awesome. Can I just ask you guys to talk about what you think the secret of your success was this year? Because you really, <laughs> seriously, you guys are very unusual. Most schools uh, cannot learn about badge learning, learn new software, adapt a whole curriculum, load all the content, and have their kids learning. I'm fully engaged. I mean, you guys, they're, they're in the midst of it all. It's not like you just started rolling it out. They've, they've been doing it since yeah, we, winter. We, yeah. Well, I mean, you, Sarah, you got us started with, with the summer course, and I think, um, I don't know if there's any magic formula. I, it's, the, it's just, you know, Kathy and, and, and Kelly and Kristen and I, we're, we're just all enthusiastic about, about uh, you know, trying something new, and, and I, I just think it was just a good combination of, of faculty and that, that really, uh, and our enthusiasm to, to show this to the children, because I think we all, think it's it's really um, this is the future yeah I think ways. we had a great team I think we worked really well and again as I said we brought in a lot of um, strengths and then we had some um, dedicated time um, both for class time because we took it as an elective the class time was already there we have really embraced as I think as a school this concept of, of failing forward that we heard about in the, in the stuff, we're just going to try. We're going to try and see what happens. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but we learn from it and we pick ourselves up and, and move on again. Okay, next up is Seattle Hebrew Academy. We will hear today from Becky Todd, their library and media specialist, Liz Eversoll, their language arts and social studies teacher, and Janet Drake, their school principal. So just a quick overview of the badge learning program here. We are an EC through 8th grade Jewish day school. We've got about 155 kids in the kindergarten through 8th. We had about 15 teachers invited to participate in the teacher summer course in the badge staff and only about six participated. I'll get into more of that in our challenges. Um, but that kind of led to the success of the program. Um, we had our middle schoolers participate in a similar version of the course this year. And then that small group of six teachers met um, monthly or so to start creating the custom badge program. And we got through about winter break. <laughs> And then it kind of stalled, and that's where we are right now. So Sarah, you can go ahead and switch. So the program the teachers completed was, I think everyone that did it was really happy with it. We all learned a lot. We were exposed to a ton of different programs that you all are aware that uh, just really were helpful in a lot of different ways. In terms of the students, they were very self-directed. They had a specific time period they were working on it, and they were able to complete the course at their own pace. One of the things that I think that we could have done better as a school is, in terms of the student course, um, the teachers who uh, led the student course were not actually teachers who had taken the teacher course, um, the summer course. Um, they were teachers who basically just because of our, the way our schedule worked out were scheduled to work an enrichment period. I would say that one of the things that we definitely learned from this process was that whoever is um, going to be teaching the course to students absolutely needs to be someone who is familiar backwards and forwards which the, with the badge learning process and it needs to be someone who has taken the teacher learning course because any, all of you guys who took the teacher learning course knows that the teacher badge course um, know that the student badge course is very similar um, in the way it's rolled out, in the way you complete the badges, and even in some of the badges that they learn. 
uh, that they actually do. And so if you're going to, just like with any subject matter, if you're going to be able to teach students or even to tutor or coach students through it, you need to be familiar with the material. One big challenge we found before the teachers took the course, before any of it was started, was that the, the administrator who kind of launched this program and really looked into it left the summer before the entire program started. So it left a accountability and excitement and engagement and motivation kind of by the wayside because we all, for the um, Janet kind of took over, but it was right in the middle of it. And so had we had more people involved from the beginning and they were held accountable, I think there would have been more success with the teachers and therefore more success with the program as a whole. And we did not, Liz made a good point, we didn't have any Judaic instructors involved with the program at all. They were invited and they had signed up to take it, but they, they just couldn't find time and they didn't complete the course. So that's a disconnect between we're half, half Judaic study and half general ed study. So there was definitely a disconnect with the students because half of their teachers had no experience with it. Their other half, some of them did and some of them didn't. So it's something that we talked about moving forward. It would need to be an all-in type situation. We had um, far underestimated the amount of time that would be needed to not only take the course, but work with the kids and plan the badges. That was that was really our downfall. With so as we're moving forward, we did start to plan, um, but in the coming year, we will have and have started to um, create a dedicated educational technology committee and they part of their responsibility part of their duties is to take this and run with it and um, we're we've also applied for funding for a technology piece just, just in whole and part of that umbrella covers the TAM rates and the badge learning and we feel that if we have the um, the funding to kind of give teachers an incentive to be on that committee to to pay them for their time, then we'll have the dedication to actually complete the badges and get the program rolled out and more successful in the future. The badges that we've started to create are for creativity and innovation and then a research and information fluency piece. Can you talk about how this experience um shifted how you think about learning and teaching at your school a little bit, if it did. The, the skills that I learned as a teacher through TAMREITS um, definitely helped me with a more successful integration of educational technology into my subject matters. So other teachers are benefiting from my having taken the course um, because I mentor them in how to use educational technologies and they come into my classroom and look at the class blogs I've, blogs I've created and just ask me for advice. Okay, well this is Leora Walner here and Catherine Godwin. And we are sharing one mic and one screen. Well, actually we're two screens now. So um, we have, this is actually year three of our program. And we are involving sixth, seventh, and eighth graders in the program. So then a little bit of a bumpier road for us because we started the pilot program before there was a Amrit's teacher program and before Credley and Haiku were part of our school system at all. So we've been through several different platforms to try to get badges rolling. And right. we're just now to the place we're really comfortable. This was part of our beginning. They were asked, you know, how would you feel about trying this gamification uh, program and, and what would be the uh, reason for um, doing it and we decided that at Epstein we have a lot of programs that recognize the kids who are involved in sports or the arts but maybe there are kids doing some really neat things that we're not recognizing so that was one motivator and then the teachers decided it would also be really nice if we could use badging to sort of encourage and reward the executive functioning that middle school teachers value that maybe middle school students don't right from the beginning we had the idea of associating each of these um, badges with a role model so for example for Jew Jewish role a model. Jewish role model right so for example um, Alana Kagan we associated with empowered learner badge and the kids um, in their 
in their advisory class in sixth grade, they learned about each of the role models. So, and they brainstormed and created these tagzitos. You can see there's Alana Kagan in the middle, and then we also have another one was Sergey Brin for information literacy, and another example was Ruth Messenger for the collaboration badge. And so they brainstormed and learned about each of the role models, and then they also, um, we had one student representative create a Vokey. And Sarah, yeah, well, I was just going to say, we, the reason we were involving the students, we really wanted a lot of the publicity to be student generated and the information that we used online. So we used their work with the Tagzitos and the Vokies to sort of promote the program, but also educate people about the role models. Probably the most popular with sixth graders, they started with the collaboration badge. And then um, while it is totally voluntary who, want, who decides that they want to work on badges, I teach a technology literacy class to sixth graders, and we decided to make it mandatory that all students do the first part of the information literacy badge. Um, I guess on the next screen you'll well, see wait, what. Go before ahead. you go there, I was going to say it's it's interesting to me how it differs from year to year because when we started out, we probably had more students working on the empowered learner badge that was before the school had a bring your own device where everybody had a laptop and the empowered learner badge was giving the students the ability to work on a computer without adult supervision once they earned the badge but now that every child is bringing their own laptop anyway that has become a little less interesting to the students and the collaboration has become a little more important. Uh, we also the first year, first two years had more students interested in the play badge so we were very excited that Haiku now has badges, and we had a very large discussion about how to incorporate our badging program into the badges that they honor. And actually, we now have a combination of both. And if you can see the screen, um, there's Messenger. There's a there's three different collaboration badges for Messenger. Um, the first is recognize it and then they talk about it and then they do it. So that's um, the blue and then the red and then the green. And for each badge that that's the sequence and those are the three levels that we are referring to. But then we also have what we're now calling tokens and we're identifying other class behaviors or other um, behaviors the teacher wants to recognize. So we yeah we started out with it being exclusively just for the Jewish role models, and now we wanted to see if we could gamify the classroom a little bit more and have tokens the way a lot of people would give stickers or tickets or points to use the tokens for those things and maybe to be able to exchange it for whatever you would normally exchange tickets for. So it really is a more of a, a gaming. You've earned a certain number of points, or each token has a certain number of points, and when you get to a certain level, you get a privilege or an extra credit or a free homework pass or whatever. Catherine and I have created certain tokens or badges that are school-wide right now, and a couple of teachers have created some just for their classroom. They've been playing around, just started playing around with it. I'm wondering what you're thinking about for moving forward. Well, we're keeping the badges and calling the badges for the bigger picture, the Jewish role models, but we're creating smaller, and they're still through Credly, and we wish we had named the badges something else before there was Credly, so we, it's harder for us to differentiate between the smaller things that Credly calls badges that we're calling tokens, but we want to mm -hmm. use more tokens in the classroom, and the badges will actually go on the transcript when you graduate. And wow. another thing that we're doing, I think, is we found it was successful requiring everybody to do the information literacy. I think next year, to involve the seventh graders more, we're going to have the rabbi during his rabbinics class um, choose a badge and have the students be required to, everyone would be at least have to recognize the badge and talk about it. And those who wanted to complete the badge will have to do a project above and beyond. But we're going to try to implement and, and embed some of these badges into the curriculum more so that we get, the, especially to get the seventh and eighth graders to continue working on them. So one last the question is the transcript. 
So what does that look like? You say you're generating your own transcripts of badge learning accomplishments. What does that look like? Is it uh, what technology are you using and how are you distributing it? Well, we use senior systems for report cards and we can't attach anything. So what we're thinking this year is similar to what you see on the screen right now is to have the icon and messenger collaboration badge and just to make sure that there is a description of what it meant for that student to earn the badge. Mm -hmm. So awesome. it'll be an addendum to their actual report card. I, I know that once they're out of eighth grade, they're eligible for the badges to also somehow transfer with the Mozilla platforms, but we haven't quite gotten to that point yet. Mm -hmm. Understood. Awesome. Really awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I love the token badges that you're using for gamifying it. It's really interesting. Next up is the Mariah School, located in Inglewood, New Jersey. Their badge learning team is going to share with us a badge program organized around their school me dote or their school values. The sixth graders um, took part in the Tamreed's badge, badging program this year, so we were targeting next year's seventh grade as, as part of our rollout since they're, they would be familiar with the badging program. And um, what we have is in our schools, we have certain me dote for the um, kids to work on. And we picked two of the Midot, Chasset and Tet, and um, we're going to have the, that's going to be our initial rollout um, for, those badge, for those badges. And um, we use Haiku as our LMS, and Haiku has built in a badging program, so that's how we're going to um, communicate with the kids, and <clears throat> we're going to make it kind of be like a class, a Chasset badge, so when they complete that, um, all the different parts, that's the badge they would get. And the overarching question, or the driving question is, how do I demonstrate kindness for others? And then um, we kept with the same format because we knew that the kids were used to Sarah's format with discover, play, and create. So there's three quests under um, the badge, the discover uh, badge where they have to pick a personality. Um, it could be Jewish, it could be not Jewish, and describe how they um, what chesed they're involved in and how they exemplify chesed. And then the play badge would be um, participating in some kind of chesed event. And the create badge would be um, running some kind of chesed event, whether it's in the school or it's in the greater um, community with their shul or however they're going to run it. And and then this is the same thing with the, with the tzedek badge. So that's the main tzedek badge. We designed it so that the main badges are a shield so that it'll be able to differentiate for the kids the difference between the, um, the main badge and the quest badges. And it's also the, the driving theme is to explore a variety of social injustices, raise awareness, and participate in community work to help rectify issues. The Discover is where they um, learn about some kind of injustice. We're lucky that we have the Museum of Tolerance right here in New York. The kids could even go there. Um, uh, the play where they um, they participate in some kind of advocacy and then to create to try to get the school to do some kind of program whether it's letter writing or whatever to uh, to kind of raise awareness about uh, an, injust an injustice in the world. We also put a leaderboard in the hallway uh, one of our teachers actually built one out of, you know, construction paper kind of thing, and the kids liked seeing where they landed on the board, and it made them more involved. Next year, we're going to do it as a club. Uh, a lot of the children did not want to participate. Uh, students did not want to participate. They were focused on their studies, and so we feel that by doing it as a club, those students that want to participate will be very more active, and um, we're going to continue to have a public leaderboard, so hopefully encouraging more students to participate. And I think you can see by the create pieces, both of them are um, things that the kids do for the community at large, and we're hoping that that will get other students involved. And at the end of the year, this year, we're giving out awards to the kids that participated, and that we also hope will encourage other students to get involved. That wraps up Badge Fest 2014. Thank you to all of our schools in the Tom Reitz Badge Learning Network for sharing the challenges and the successes of your badge learning journey this year. And we look forward to hearing how things unroll for you in the fall.